this week's episode, I'm working on this uh, oven base that I'm sitting on behind me. This is the first time I've ever tried doing cordwood wall structure. But before I start this video, I just wanted to quickly thank everybody who has ordered t-shirts and mugs and, and the other uh, merchandise that I have on the website. Really, really appreciate that. I'm overwhelmed by the response. I like this design. I'm glad you guys do too. And I have to thank my wife for coming up with it and for getting that put on some merchandise for all of us. The other thing I wanted to thank you for was for subscribing and liking and commenting. I'm really appreciative of everybody who's doing that and I really appreciate your encouragement as well. You know, it takes about three times as long to do anything, whether it's building or fishing or canoeing, whatever it is, to uh, capture that on film and then another full day typically to edit a video. So when you guys give me your feedback and you show that you're enjoying what I'm doing, it really makes it worthwhile. I could probably have had this cabin built and the outdoor kitchen built and probably another thing if, uh, by now if I hadn't been doing these videos. So um, I really appreciate that you're appreciating the extra effort I'm putting into it.
you're a mason, there's a number of you that are that are watching this, or if you've ever done cordwood construction like this, then I'm sure you have lots of comments or criticisms about the way I'm doing this, and you'd be right, because like I've said many times before on other projects, I really don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing it anyway. And the reason I'm bringing that up right now while working on this is because I'm getting a lot of comments again. And I assume they're from younger guys and they're from newer uh, newer uh, viewers, newer subscribers. Getting comments that they wish they could do this or that they know they couldn't do this, do any of this kind of stuff. And uh, I've said it many times that this is completely new to me. And even though I have a construction background, I became a sheet metal worker, started taking a sheet metal apprentice when I was uh, late 21 years old because I had built that cabin first ended up coming out of the bush, going to work with my father as a sheet metal apprentice. So I did that, I did sheet metal work in a commercial setting for about eight years. And then I moved into the office and I haven't really been doing construction since then. So some of those skills are transferable, obviously, once you know how to measure things and cut things and, and pay attention to little details like that, you can transfer those skills to other things. So carpentry and masonry to some degree are skills that um, I don't have, but the measuring part of it and the planning and all that kind of stuff, it's helpful from what I learned in the other trade. But it doesn't change the fact that I didn't know what I was doing when I started this, didn't know what I was doing when I started sheet metal. Until you do something, you don't know it. So uh, it's not an excuse that if I haven't done this before, I can't do it now. I just had to relocate, the wind picked up all of a sudden. It was really calm this morning and now wind is coming out of the northwest, which is great. Hopefully it'll cool things down a bit. It's over 30 degrees again today. And with no wind, it's starting to get very hot working in the sun here. So what I was saying is that, um, you know, when you're younger, and when I was younger, I thought guys my age were, were old and irrelevant. And that I didn't have much to learn from them and that they were completely different people than what I was. And what you discover as you get older is you really don't change. Yes, you gain more experience, but you don't change who you are. So I think almost exactly the way I thought when I was 20. And if I look back at my journals from that period, especially when I was building the cabin, or some of my old hunting journals that I started in my teens, I still use the same phrases. I still talk the same. I still think the same. So thinking that I needed to do things really quickly when I was younger because I wasn't going to have the opportunity to do those later because I was going to be too old to do them is is wrong it's just wrong and and some of the risks I took over the years especially when I started my first big business the risks I took were because I thought I had to make a whole bunch of money in a short period of time so, so that I could enjoy a longer retirement or not to uh, be um, insecure in my financial situation as I got older. I wish I had known now that if I had just stuck to it and gone slowly, learned things as I went, uh, accumulated uh, knowledge in and money as I, as I matured, I would have been perfectly fine. But I put it all on the line, I lost it and I had to start over again at uh, 40, 41 years old. And what I learned over the, say the last 25 years is that by working hard, I could make more money, I could do things that were uh, more suited to my skills. And then the next thing I learned is that if I worked smart, I could make even more money. So I started my own commercial roofing and sheet metal business. So I was able to work hard and smart and therefore make quite a bit of money, about three times what I was making or more as a tradesman. So working hard, working smart. And then when I lost everything, I realized the missing component and all that is that I wasn't doing something that I liked and that I was passionate about. So in the next big business that I started was in renewable energy, something that I felt passionate about. And in that business, what I learned is that if I worked hard, smart, and did something that I was passionate about, then I could make a lot more money. But I think what's most relevant to, to the younger generation, including my daughters who are 18 and 19, uh, you have a tough time ahead of you, um, but it's not overwhelming. So I encourage you to follow your passion, work smart, work hard, be curious, and live an unconventional life and one of meaning.
Now make sure you tune in next week to the next episode, the following episode of the Outdoor Kitchen as I start the cob, which is the clay sand and uh, grass or straw mixture that I'm putting on top of this platform as a thick platform to, to hold the mass or hold the heat. And then on top of that, I'll be building the earthen oven out of the same material. So I'm not only looking forward to continuing to finish this project, but really looking forward to having this outdoor kitchen to, to uh, cook all my meals from now on. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you up at the cabin next time. Take care.